we are live. We are coming at you in your car, on your desk, in your ears. Hello. My name is Evan. My name is Taylor. I read a book this week. I didn't really do anything this week, actually, so I'm sorry. What did I, what did I read, though? <laughs> oh, this week we are covering Casino Royale by Ian Fleming. James Bond, let's go. Let's get it. Casino Royale is the first novel by British author Ian Fleming. Published in 1953, it's the first James Bond book. The first in the amazing James Bond franchise. Yeah. Have, have, have you read this before, though? I had never read it before. No? Really? I had seen, as I'm sure everyone has, the Daniel Craig business. Oh, yeah. Revitalization. There was a 1967 film that came out that was almost a parody, comedy, madcap. Has nothing to do with the book. <laughs> At all. Woody Allen is in it. Orson Welles is in it. What in the world? And it's like everybody's pretending to be James Bond, and so there's six James Bonds. Oh, it's this almost screwball comedy that did horribly. That sounds like that belongs in another dimension. Mm -hmm. Like, that does (laughs) not sound like that could have happened. (laughs) But allegedly, it's based off of this book. But this is the OG original one. Did you say what it came out? The real deal. 1953. Correct. Yeah, 1953. It sold out in a month on the first print. Really? So So it was like a successful immediately. Very, very popular. Yeah. Wow. Um, Well, so I listened to the audio book version, which I highly recommend because the guy is British, but then he Uh does the Russian accent for the Russians and the French accent for good, the French he's getting, he's and the Texan it. accent for good. the Texans. It's Immersion, so it, it, it's so nice. It's so good. It's it so feels, nice. yeah, it feels like a fully acted voice cast, right? But it's not. It's just this one guy. So I enjoy being it. weird in a booth, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, talking to himself in all these different accents. Boy, you do what? The the women voices, the man voices. I love it. All different stuff. So we're gonna kind of go through the plot. Let's go. And then we'll talk about what in the world this book means and why it became one of the highest grossing media properties of all time. Yeah, it's really unparalleled, I think. It's, it's yeah. insane. And um, why? We'll find out. Yeah. Starts Casino Royale. Dun, dun, dun. Bond checks into a room. Immediately, he's on spy business. He's making sure that there's a hair still placed on the dresser drawer. He's finding the talcum powder that he put on the dresser. He's like... Is there a break-in? What has happened? He's in Casino Royale, which is this place in France. (laughs) France. He seems kind of cold and distant, which I think of immediately the perception of James Bond as being the suave ladies' man, Hmm. debonair, out on the town, partying, womanizing. But this is very, this is harsher, like more just... He's strictly business. Hmm. He's in his hotel room alone. He drinks so much alcohol and smokes so much in these books, um, which is part of Ian Fleming, the author's character. How could he get this detective work done? You could smell him a mile away. (laughs) If that's all true, no way. (laughs) Yeah. What reeks of alcohol and smoke? Oh, that's just secret agent spy James Bond (laughs) five blocks away. The second chapter then goes into, well, what's he doing here? So it kind of flashes back. Mm-hmm. It's just, I, I like this. It was just the dossier on the bad guy. It was like f- open folding the book. Okay. Here's who the bad guy is. Yeah. Not any plot elements whatsoever. I'm for it. So here's what's happening. It's the guy, Le Chief, who apparently, so this is all Cold War stuff. Even though the book came out in 53, it's all from here on out, like the Russians are bad. Oh. Um, Imagine that. And then the second half of the James Bond lexicon goes more into, like, global terror organization specter. Mm, okay. But this is purely Cold War, USSR, yeah. Soviets. Classic. Red Scare. I'm, 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 I'm for it. Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're for it. I'm for, I'm for the conflict. I'm for the tension, yeah. Taylor. <laughs> okay. I'm for the period. Good. It happened. We must embrace it. It happened. <laughs> <laughs> the conspiracy of the week. So this guy, Le Chief, is from an unknown origin. He just chose that name. He's a weird dude. Uh, and he got in with the Russian government, but now he's lost a lot of money because he bought a bunch of brothels in France. He invested and then, in brothels and it didn't work out. And then they made a whole law that you can't have any pornographic material or brothels or anything like that. We were making a bunch of money doing this. And then they passed a law made it where we can't anymore. So now he has all of this <laughs> debt. 
<laughs> and there's a secret Russian organization, which is similar to the KGB, but specifically just tracking down people that messed up that were a part of the Russian government, and they mm-hmm. just assassinate them. So they oh. deem whether or not they're they're bad, and then they off them. And it's called Smirsh, which I thought was sort of funny, S M E R S H, but it's a portmanteau of the Russian phrase meaning death to spies. Sounds like a deformed Smurf. Sounds <laughs> the like Smurf the, like is the after kick you. around Smurf. <laughs> The so one that nobody wants to bring with them on the adventure. Yeah. <laughs> Get out of here, Smirsh. They don't want him here either. So apparently this guy is a master gambler as well. And because they can't, uh, he can't do anything, it would take too long to get this money back. He owes like 40 million francs or something. <laughs> oh, so, God. <laughs> so he's just going to go to the Casino Royale and gamble and win and maybe rig it and something. And this well, is something that's that a plan. all the different international organizations <laughs> know this guy. And so they want, the only way that they can think of to stop him is to beat him at the gambling game that's going on because if they just assassinate him well then the russians are just going to pretend that he's a martyr and draw more people to their cause ah. they have to they have to have him fail from within mm. so that he looks like the bad guy I'm playing those them. mind games they're yeah. tricky it's already confusing <laughs> good lord so we learn about him and they say okay now that down now we're still in the figuring out what's going on this the stakes are set who's going to play this game so then we go into m which Dun 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 dun, oh. dun 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 That's the first. It's a guy. I think Judy Dench plays M. Yeah, I think it goes back and I think Ralph. There's a, no, he plays somebody else. Ralph finds. But M it's, does it's, play in the old one. It's an Judy old man, Dench, and yeah, then Judy, Judy Dench, Dench is in, in the newer the, ones. Up it's a guy. Until Skyfall, I think. It's a yeah. It's a guy to start out in this one, and he not not really much characterization, but he's just saying, 007, you're on this." And we're going to give you a person to help you from from the French government. And he's like, ooh, I hope it's Mathis. I don't trust him. Who? I'm just throwing <laughs> Mathis. I don't trust him. From the, are you just going to give me this guy? Well, 007 said he hopes <laughs> it's Mathis because he liked him. Because of something they did at Monte Carlo, some other mission. I still don't trust him. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Evan is planting suspicions that you have no reason to uphold. <laughs> Um, well, yeah, we'll see. The book didn't plant him, <laughs> but Evan wants to. <laughs> James Bond says a line where he's he says he hopes that it would be better if the person that is helping him is stupid because that's that's better than being too ambitious. Mm-hmm, so you can already mm-hmm. see he's cold. He doesn't like other people. He just wants things done. He wants some lap dog. He doesn't want any help. <laughs> so he gets to Casino Royale and... His cover is that he's this Jamaican playboy <laughs> that inherited a bunch of money because he's got to be somebody that can, low profile that can stay at the table with all of these rich people from across Europe. Sure, <laughs> he gets into his hotel room. Mathis pops in, mm-hmm. explains to him that his room is bugged by this other couple. They already figured out. They don't know what happened, but now suspicions are mounting because how do they already know that he's coming in and oh, what's weird, going on? Yeah. But he's glad that it's Mathis. But Mathis is like, hey. I have this lady who's assisting me, and she's also going to be a part of this organ thing that we're doing and assist us. And immediately, I guess for the time also, but it's very chauvinistic. He hates women. He thinks they're stupid. He thinks they should be in the kitchen. All of the tropes of that mm. come into play. Doesn't want her. He's like, women should not be doing this kind of stuff. Mathis is like, too bad. Jeez. You're going to meet her tomorrow. So he meets her. Her last name is Lint. She, they don't give us her first name. This is where he drives his car around. They say that's his really only hobby he has, and he, he has his favorite car. His car. But it, in this he book, he likes it's, being mean. <laughs> yeah, and driving his cars, associating and with lo- with just <laughs> with people he can control, and driving his car. Yeah, I love it. Um, and what a beautiful soul. <laughs> the just for you Bond fans, the car is a Bentley. It's not an Aston Martin. I wonder where that got changed. Some know. producer probably had a friend. <laughs> Money. He's like, yeah, I'll put it in. Look at that. Now we don't even know. I didn't look it up. I didn't see how it changed. But it was it's a Bentley in this. This Lint woman who he's sort of attracted to, but just purely physically, he's you know, he doesn't want technically right. her to be involved in any of this stuff. She says he looks like Hoagie Carmichael or acts like Hoagie Carmichael. And I looked this up because I'm like, I don't know anything yeah, I don't about know who these that people is. are. So he is a very, very like famous <laughs> singer, musician in the thirties, I believe. Okay. 
and came up with some of the he came up with Georgia on my mind. Oh wow. And he came up with Heart and Soul. Dun 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 da 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 dun 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 you know that? Uh uh wait, wasn't that hold on, no, I don't. Dun 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 it's like the famous piano duet song. Yeah. Maybe you don't know. Apparently he was a heartthrob of the time. James Bond pushes it aside. He's like, no, I'm not like that guy. Yeah. So they're chilling at dinner because he's meeting with this girl. Explosion outside. Good God. Uh, as he <laughs> exits because he sees these people, these two guys that are very suspicious. They don't look like they belong here. Running from the explosion or no, right, this right is before? Right before. Gotcha, James Bond goes outside, yeah. And there's these two guys. One of them has a red camera case and one of them has a blue camera case. James Bond is behind a tree and sees the one guy fumbling with the red camera case like he's about to throw it hmm? as the other guy is, is messing with the blue one. And then James Bond is behind this tree and it just explodes both of them. Almost like a, what are they, like a suicide bomber. Oh, man. And so clearly they were trying to attack him or throw the thing at him, get rid of him. Again, more suspicion. What in the world's going on? They know his room's bugged. Now, now these assassins are after him. But they obviously failed. He meets this guy. That Now this is where there's an American that comes in. There's just more agencies coming in. Felix Leiter. And this is where the famous... He says, who are you? And he says, Bond, James Bond. Mm, right there, right, right up front in the right series. Up, right up front. Has dinner with this woman. His name is Vesper, which is the Latin word for night. And he orders his very peculiar martini that's now very, very famous. The particular amounts. Those are all very, stir. very sexy words, Taylor. <laughs> I've been mystified. Sorry, give me just a moment. <laughs> <laughs> to absorb the suaveness that is James Bond. Good thing he's cold and mean and only cares about his car and associates with people he can control. But now he's and now he's getting a liking to this woman. No. And he says, I'm going to name the drink after Vesper. Still it's a good one. Nice. <laughs> nice. Smooth. Okay. I was surprised because it says they have a scar on his cheek and he's got unruly hair. He's been in the business. I'm for this image of James Bond much different than well, any, that's, like, it's yeah. so much different than what we think. Of. And that's where I think when they did, when they redid the Casino Royale with Daniel Craig and people are like, that's not James Bond. It's like, well, if you read the old a, book, he kind of is. It's a little closer than, you yeah. know, like, he, he's still, like, it sounds like the whole image is off. He's a little more rugged. Yeah. He's not, I don't know, all about the gadgets and the. He just wants to get the job done. Mm-hmm. That yeah. sounds like it. Like he's and this, yeah, just and wants to get the job done. Mm-hmm. God. So he's at dinner with this gal, and she explains what happened because she's been talking to all the other organizations that are here at this casino before the big game goes down. And she was saying, "Well, this is what they found out about the bombers. So they're Bulgarian, which doesn't really matter. The Bulgarians. <laughs> yeah, um, they found me. I don't know how, but they found me because they're not connected to anybody, but they are sort of Soviet related. Apparently." The blue one was supposed to be a smoke one, and the red one was the bomb. Oh. Right? And so what they wanted, they were they were all set up double-crossed, triple-crossed, whatever it might be, because they were supposed to throw the red one at him and then detonate the blue one, which is the smoke, so that they could escape. Mm. And not be seen what was going on. Now they're trying to cover themselves. And they've all died. And they, well, they're saying, we, we just wanted to do the... Uh, and then they had a third guy also that was a part of it that was off to the side that wasn't with doing the bombs. So the guy with the blue was like, well, we want to do the... I didn't build the bombs! <laughs> <laughs> we want to do the smoke first and then throw the red one. But they had been fooled and they were both bombs. So they were trying to cover right. themselves. And when they hit the they hit the uh, blue one, they just both exploded. Good God. And left the what part of the red one. And then they caught, they caught the other guy who told them. So now they're like, okay, well, they really don't want us here. But James Bond got hurt from this explosion. So he plays it up to the concierge being like, yeah, I can't really, you know, I don't feel so well. Um, So a couple things. If we could get a few more pillows on the 13th <laughs> floor, that'd be great. I uh, have a neck issue. And, uh... Those bombs really put a dent in my knee. Okay? I don't know if I can play this casino game. Because they say in the book, he does, you don't know who to trust. Gonna need some help with that, ma'am. Thank you. Yeah, no. Thank you. 
I don't know who to trust. She could be a spy. Anybody could be a spy. It's a madhouse out here. The game they're playing, the poker game, is called Baccarat. Are you familiar? I've definitely heard that. They changed it to Texas Hold'em, oh, the okay. Daniel yeah. Craig one, because that was more popular at the time. Weird. But this is a more popular British one. He explains it in the book, and I sort of didn't really care how all the intricacies of it. But it's basically like there's a there's a banker who has you bet against kind of almost like you know twenty one yeah where you have to get twenty one yeah, yeah, if you yeah. go over you bust whatever that's my game right there when I go to Vegas that's it that's it baby <laughs> twenty one <laughs> hit me that's uh, it so it's kind of like that the only de- for anybody that's interested the only thing that's different is you put they put the two cards down and you can look at it and see what your number is so they give you a thing and a thing the face and the ten mean nothing and then all the other ones are numbered. And the ace is one, so ace is one, two is two, three, mm. three whatever. Mm-hmm. But you're just, you're trying to get nine. And if you go over nine, you bust. Mm. But the way that it works, like, let's say you get a six and a seven. That's 13. That's over. So it's only the last number that counts. So one, three of the 13, technically your number is three. Oh. Which is, a, it's, ha- it's hard that's to then, it's a little bit more strategy where it's stranger to try and figure out what, whether you have a good hand or not. That's a little interesting. And if you could like count that. the cards, you would know what the number combinations are, that kind of thing. That's so if, cool. Yeah, so like if you like get a five and a four, that. that's nine. You're good. Hmm. But if you get a nine and a seven, technically you have six. And then the other thing is you have to flip over your third card, and so the banker has the upper hand, technically, the house does, because they can see if you decided to get another third card, and your third card is a nine... It's like, well, then you definitely probably are over nine. <laughs> yeah. You know. Um, that's interesting. So I that, like that. Yeah. So that's what he's playing. And the only reason I go into it is because the way that he writes it is suspenseful. And it's hard, I would imagine, to write people playing cards and flipping over cards yeah. to carry You would any... have to, like, you would have to have done it some, so much mm-hmm. to be able to write it the way it feels. Like, you would have to be a card player, boy. Like... And he, yeah, he uses a lot of description about how people are reacting and the and the way that they're moving and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. That's um, nice. One of the things, oh, he he said somebody looked like an octopus under a rock, <laughs> which I thought was a funny description. <laughs> but it's very visual, and you can imagine yeah, yeah, this creepy yeah. guy with his <laughs> long fingers. <laughs> so they're playing the game. Everything's going sort of okay, and then there's these two creepy guys behind him. The American guy's there, Vesper's there, the lady, Mathis is there. This is a big deal. And he's playing oh, against dang. these 11 other people and Le Chief, who's trying to win all this money back. Le Chief. So there's these two creepy guys that show up. One of them has a cane, which Bond knows what's going on. You're not allowed to have anything that could be used as a weapon mm-hmm. in the casino. But this guy's clearly on the opposition and is faking it and something is going to happen that's a massive stick (laughs) so the guy (laughs) pokes him in the back with the cane and he's he's it's a gun that's a silenced gun so he's going to shoot him oh look at that somebody's not getting a weapon (laughs) (laughs) who knew he's going to shoot him in the tuchus uh and he says it's just going to look like you fainted and nobody's going to know and i'm going to disappear so you have to lose well you could scream he shot me not if he shoots him right in the back of the spinal column. Uh, he said it's gonna it's gonna shut him down uh, immediately. Okay, okay. I was like, you can just shoot somebody in the butt and they'll <laughs> like, yeah. Ah, oh, I got him. The <laughs> no, secret. right. No, sorry. It's he's hitting it right in his spine in, in the bottom of I his see, spine. I see. Yes, I was. Yeah. I, yes, that uh, would do it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so he says, I'm gonna count to ten, and then if you don't leave this place and end the game and give up, I'm dang. Gonna shoot you. And he can't tell anybody what's going on. And the guy starts counting down. James Bond has to think fast. So he just... He's counting in French. <laughs> Un. <laughs> Deux. <laughs> I, I don't know all the French know. numbers. No, not even close. Uh, but he, he, he flings himself backward like he's fainted in his chair. Snaps the <laughs> cane. The guy storms off, disappears. But he pretends like it was the nerves and the energy and whatever. And he just... It's embarrassing. <laughs> Yeah, well, somebody just broke his cane gun. That was, It's not like that's cheap or easy. Yeah. But for James Bond, it's embarrassing that he just... Flew fainted. himself backwards. <laughs> I was like, ah, broke the chair. <laughs> Causes a 10-minute delay. 
And then Jesus, you go. Pardon me. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to Fell do that. Right. I need to more crackers, please. <laughs> <laughs> My special drink that I make that's very confusing. <laughs> and five more What's cigarettes. What's it called? The Vespa? <laughs> Sir, we don't make it. That's a motorcycle. <laughs> <laughs> he's, there's a guy up front. He's screaming about a motorcycle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's going to lose anyways. So then he loses. Right in the middle of the, oh. of the book. After all that. He loses. He loses. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And you're like, well, what, 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 I still what? have half the book. What's going on? Yeah. I don't remember this in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I hope he like, goes to the mountains and finds himself. So he's, he's about to do that. He's about to be like, <laughs> he's thinking through, well, I, what am I going to do? I'm going to go back to MI6 and like, yeah. this guy's going to get away and all oh this stuff's going God. on. And then he gets an envelope slipped in. It's from the American. And it's like the, a ton of more money to keep playing. Oh. From the Americans. Because it was a huge thing of all these international groups being involved. Oh. And the fact that the British guy gets to be the one at the table, they're all involved. But the Americans, that's what they're coming in with, is the money to help out. So then he's back in the game. Wow. Everybody's like, oh my goodness. Cool. They, what have a to, they have to what be a... like, you have to show, because it's like 30 million francs or something. And they're like, we, you know, because there are people that lie and say, yeah, yeah, I got the money. And then when they lose again, they go to jail. They're happy to go to jail just to keep playing. Yeah. So he has to prove that he actually, and then he has the money. So then he wins. Yeah, he's got the cash. <laughs> he can do it. American money. There's the Americans coming through. We are the muscle. We are. We, Standing we can't, in the background we can't shrouded. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We won't gamble, but we will certainly fund it. We will fund <laughs> you to go do some crazy stuff. Yes, we will. And nobody cares about those repercussions. Yeah. He wins. At all. Yeah. <laughs> Let him win. We'll just <laughs> pick up the tab. He wins. It's 3 a.m. now. A crazy night. Wow. That guy, dis- Le Chief, disappears into the darkness. Did he recoup his... No- <laughs> yes. Yeah. His his prostitution loss. His- he lost it all. Lost so, it now, all. so now this Smirsh, the creepy yeah. KGB group, is going to come after him. Uh, so he's just dis- disappeared. He disappears. So into he's the done. Night. My yeah. God. So James Bond has completed his mission. He goes back to his hotel room to hide the money, in an undisclosed location. Goes out uh, with this with this girl to celebrate Vesper. It's sort of ambiguous what she's doing there because she hadn't really done anything. But also the American hadn't done anything, and Mathis hadn't done anything. I think it's just all potentially if things go sour or whatever happens. Sure. You need every international group to be there and yeah. be involved. Yeah. She's, they have dinner. She's sort of odd and reserved and not really celebrating. And then she says, oh, somebody comes up to her and she says, oh, this is a note from Mathis. He says to meet him out front. He's in his night clothes, so he can't come in. And, and then James Bond is perplexed and then thinks, that's not, I know Mathis. That ain't, that ain't sound like Mathis, Mathis right now. dead. Rushes out there, doesn't see her, doesn't see him, sees a car speed away, a purse launched from the back seat, goes to pick it up. It's hers. Oh my God. Clearly a forgery of Mathis note. They've abducted her. Oh. Certainly this Lashif guy. Her purpose finally revealed. <laughs> to be abducted. God. So now it's a car chase in his one and only favorite thing. Ah, it's coming into play. Yeah. Not only does he love it, he now gets, he needs it. He gets to use it. This is a quote from him, his angry monologue to himself in the car. Blithering women and their pots and pans. Good God. Oh I my was, God. I was shocked. Jesus. Do we want to dig into the, the psychological annals of, the, of the, the childhood upbringing of James Bond? And whatever he was. <laughs> or Ian Fleming. We'll get to that at the uh. end. But, um, but he's chasing him. They're about a mile off on this country, you know, coastal road. And then they drop, classic spy move, uh, spikes in the road Ah. and pull off to the side and double back. He misses it in time, slams in, flips his car over. They grab him, put him in the back seat with her and drive off. And then he realizes, oh, I was set up. It was a bait and switch. Mm -hmm. They were getting her so that they could get to me. Led you right to him. Yeah. And now he's trapped. So he... Is captured, goes back to Lashif's villa, and they keep this part. This they keep this part in the movie, 
the, the newer movie with Daniel Clegg in Casino Royale, because mm-hmm. they throw him into a room, cut out the bottom of the chair. Yeah. And forewarning, this is sort of graphic. But <laughs> they cut out the chair, strap him to right. it, and then they bring he brings a pot of coffee, this carpet beater cane thing, and then a knife, and like under slings it up into his groin area mm-hmm. the cane into the bits and into the bits as torture god and also it's very demeaning to his masculinity which he clearly cares so much about so it's like over time it's just going to be gone good lord he gives him some coffee because he's saying like if you want if you want to talk mm-hmm. yeah that happened in the movie he gives him the coffee and then it gets to the point where james bond is clearly not going to talk, and he's sort of halfway passed out. Mm. And Lashif reaches for the knife, and he's like, fine, well, then we'll just end it. Get rid of whatever's down there. <laughs> Jeez. At, at this point, Smirsh uh, pops in. No. <laughs> shoots Lashif in the back. Dun, 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 dun. Shoots the Yeah, sh- shoots the dudes that were holding uh, Vesper, and says, you're lucky because we were just told to shoot them, not you. Normally, we just shoot everybody. Wow. But this was our contract. But we know you're a spy. And so he carves the Russian symbol, Shah, which is the first part of Smirsh, which just means that he's a spy. (laughs) Okay. Into his hand. So now he's got this scar. Um, Now he's got the mark so that if he ever shows up or they ever know, it's like then they're going to go after him again. I see. Yeah. But it ain't over, folks. But it ain't over. It sounds like it's over. Now he's in the hospital. They're like, what, dude, where did you put the money? Because Lashif was like, we tore your whole freaking uh, place to bits. We went through every drawer. We ripped open all the curtains. We ripped up all your clothes. We we're like, where in God's name did you put the money? We burned down the house. Uh, and he didn't tell. And so now that he's in the hospital, they're like, yeah, we also, the British government, everybody went back into that hotel room, was trying to find where you put the money. <laughs> the Americans, so where'd you put that money? <laughs> yeah. Everybody. Uh, he said, oh, well, I put it in the in where the door number is. Hmm. The little plaque that is the door number. I unscrewed that on the front of the door, <laughs> put the check behind there, and then screwed it back in. Because nobody's going to look yeah. there. Yeah, you go into the room to try and see where he hit it, not oh, right at right. the front door. How many agencies search, <laughs> search that room and didn't search that? Yeah, all of them. And then Mathis, Mathis is talking to him. He's like, what are you going to do? And James Bond says, well, I'm going to resign. Out the game. And Mathis is like, what are you talking about? Why in the world would you resign? And James Bond, and this is warning to everyone, this is where Michael I was most Jordan surprised speaking. in the whole, he is going <laughs> to buy the Charlotte Bobcats <laughs> and, live, and do Haynes commercials. Basically. I'm going to go to be- baseball. <laughs> But I was so surprised for this because I thought, oh, this is the first James Bond story. Certainly he would not resign. Right, right. <laughs> no. you can't just, no, it can't be the end. Yeah. This is the beginning. And at this point, I felt there's no, there hasn't really been a lot of character development or growth or any indication that anybody's doing anything but being a spy and, you know, shaking hands and calling it a day. And he was like, it's, it's easy to pick the right and wrong thing as a kid. But when I was sitting there in the chair... Lashif was the hero torturing me, the villain, for him. And it becomes so much more Shades of Grey. The only reason you can get a double O marker as a spy is if you willfully kill people. And so he was saying, I ki- the, the, the last two people I killed, it was a snipe from a distance and it was something else over here. And the second I got this, you know, we have, this is a very British Christian time frame. So he's referring to the Bible obviously in this, but he's like, there's books that tell you to be good and it's a good book and how to do good, but where are the evil books that are explaining how to be evil Hmm. and, and just his whole black and white has become shades of gray. And again, where he's going through, Oh, this is just trying to get the job done sense of duty. And he's like, I, I don't feel that anymore because I don't know what, you know, to him, it was good to me. It was evil. And I stared it in the face, and this isn't for me. And uh, Mathis says, well, you ought to be tortured more often. <laughs> Got a bunch of insight from it. But he said, let me – and then Mathis explains, which I thought was very, very wise. He was saying, uh, you know, you 
think of it this way. You saw the personal evil in front of you. You saw somebody about to get raped and torture and all of these things. It was, it was in the, it was whatever the, the duty and the idealism is, it was right in front of you. Mm -hmm. And when you find love or you have kids, certainly it's going to be easier to see. And then this is the great quote that you need to remember. He says, surround yourself with human beings. They're easier to fight for than principles. All right. We've had a great episode, everybody. <laughs> Come on back next week where we'll just read that quote again and uh, we'll just keep doing that. Amazing. <laughs> That's pretty fantastic. Yeah. Um, read it again. for. I want to hear it again. Yeah. He says, surround yourself with human beings. They're easier to fight for than principles. And who else is in this hospital but Vesper? The woman? The bike. No. <laughs> <laughs> the scooter? <laughs> but now, so surprising because he's used to just loving them and leaving them or just using them or just being very anti-woman everything. Woman is a tool. Uh, it's but, an object. <laughs> right. But... Because he's stuck in the hospital, he's also been reduced in his manhood. He doesn't know if his parts are going to work anymore or uh, what's going on uh. there. And sh nothing happened to her. They didn't do anything to her. Th he thought she was being tortured and God knows what. And she said, no, they left me alone and they fell asleep. And that's how this Smirsch guy stuck in, snuck in and shot him, huh. which is sort of suspicious. But she helps him kind of get better and shows up, you know. They form a relationship, and he's starting to see more of the personality as opposed to just who he thought she was. Okay. Rose an attraction to her. So he like and, actually starts listening to her. Right. It, and, it's, and it's not the usual foolishness. You know, the more I listen to you, the more it's like you're a whole person. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's like, oh, wow, yeah. And because they have to go there. slow, because he's trapped in this hospital and he can't do anything, but they plan on <laughs> moving their situation elsewhere so then they They're forced to listen yeah oh you uh, have feelings they go out to this villa and he's like oh i don't just want to sleep with her and then leave you know now i want to it would be nice if you stayed <laughs> but sh now she's getting pretty cagey and distant and he's saying what in the world's going uh -oh. on no 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 she's thinking that there's this guy following them he's like no it's just a car behind us people drive on roads you know, he's, he's, he's not seeing yeah. what she's seeing, but he also doesn't know what she's gone through, but she's becoming more distant. Yeah. There's a time where they're at this villa where he thinks, oh, I was going to ask her to marry me, mm. but she got this weird telephone call and then was super sketchy about it and then wouldn't tell me. He's like, does she have another lover in Paris? What's going on? Oh, God, Very confusing. Go. She sees the guy again. She's like, that's the guy that was following oh, us no. on the, in the car a long time ago. He's like, what are you talking about? Just their intimacy goes way downhill. This is the last day they're going to be together. And he goes into her room, and she's committed suicide. Oh? Uh? With sleeping pills. She leaves a note on the bed, which explains everything, which was that she was a double agent the whole time, working for the Russians. She used to have a lover who was captured by them, who was Polish. They were blackmailing her to give them information, which is why from the very beginning, everything was set up, why they knew the room was bugged, why they were going to throw the bomb at him, why the guy in the cane could get into the place, yeah, all of that stuff, uh, why the people didn't attack her. And she was just like, I, I did fall in love with you, but, uh, I, you know, couldn't, uh, I'm just like drifted off into thought on that. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just like a distant. I'm just like looking into an, a, a distant sunset that goes on forever that's not there. Yeah, and he oh. cries. It says in the book he's he's emotionally affected by it, and when he realizes it's like the climax of, of Casino Royale and James Bond cries, <laughs> which is a big deal. Yeah. from reading this book from the beginning to the end, for me at least. Yeah. And what he realizes sure is, oh, that, now, from the coldness. Yeah, what Mathis was saying about this personal evil affecting you, yeah, it hits him. And he's saying he doesn't blame these black and white situations, but he's saying, okay, well, here's the problem. It's not the spies and the games we're playing and all this stuff. It's this organization, this smirsh that's blackmailing people and going after the spies for what they're doing. Mm. Because I can't live on the duty and these ideals of these bigger countries 
So he calls up the, the agency and says, I'm going after these people. This is who we should be going after. Whoa. End of the book. <laughs> what are you thinking? That's wild. Yeah. Well, I kind of wish that... W- is that not in a movie? Like... No, just, I think just, that, is that, it? That, that's how the end of... So Vesper and all that, she's in the new Casino Royale right, but movie. but does she kill herself? Mm-hmm. She does? Mm-hmm. She drowns herself. Oh. Yeah. I need to rewatch it. Yeah, they pulled a lot I of it. I did not... That uh, that part, I did not... I knew she died, but I did not remember that she... There's much more action to it, and it doesn't become... I think they do live together in this villa or whatever, yeah. but I don't remember it carrying the emotional impact that it did for me... The same way as it did in the book. No, uh, no, not what you, not what you just described. Um, and yeah. somebody else might have thought it was thin, but I was engrossed. Maybe it was the guy narrating. Definitely shocking. I mean, I mean, what a what a what a way to just like I can imagine reading this the first time when it came out and just being like, oh my god, you would think this is the greatest thing you'd ever read. Yeah, <laughs> uh, and Ian Fleming said specifically he said he wanted to write his books as a thriller designed to be read as literature yeah hell yeah and a lot of people praise his the quality of his writing it almost has a poetic sense to it and he puts in this is what's called the fleming effect it was named after him in literary circles for what he started to do so if you want to tell Mm. somebody why what he did for this type of writing he put in which I guess people didn't really do because it was fictional. Very specific brands, very specific locations, real world stuff. Hmm. Saying that James Bond drove a Bentley as opposed to a fancy car. Right. Grounded, saying he was uh, somebody from Jamaica doing this, you know. Yeah, okay. Making it very, very real world and tangible got people good. So Ian Fleming. Uh huh. The Fleming effect. That's fascinating. Yeah. I didn't know anything about that. So. If things were just more vague. <laughs> I suppose. <laughs> so I'm like, um, can't say Chevrolet. <laughs> no. <laughs> How interesting that yeah. is. Um, I'm still like, I'm still just like thinking about. Yeah. Well, I think also here's an interesting thing to consider: the fact that my perception of the James Bond canon of films and whatnot was very much the Playboy. And the woman there is just a pretty face and a model who he does. He's suave. He has a nice, sexy things too. And then so be it. Yeah, yeah. It's a high class, and that is just not. It's not really the character in the book. Fleming said he he wanted James Bond to just have things happen to him and him to be pretty dull. (laughs) He wasn't this heroic. Cool, ultimate. Man's man, crazy. Ultimate, yeah. yeah. How strange that that has been twisted. Over time. Over yeah. time. I mean, he's like the ultimate swap. Like the, okay, <laughs> that's how crazy it is, is yeah. that we're, we're saying, Daniel Craig is not James Bond. He's not suave enough. I'm like, what? <laughs> like, <laughs> he's not suave enough for you? He's rugged? You know, like... Wh- but earlier we're calling him like because he is more aligned with yeah. this character than most of the other James Bonds. With a watch but that he's turns still... into a spider and flies. <laughs> but like he, but he's still Daniel Craig. He's still really suave because mm-hmm. that is the character, and they can't just totally. They, they didn't just start from scratch. It was still a recognizable character, but a little more like the book, yeah. not like he was like the character in the book it would be really fascinating to see an actual translation of this like to the t i don't know i mean maybe i think they did it, it's good yeah i mean I, i'm not enough. not not bashing the 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 film because i mean i really enjoyed the the film but it's the, this relationship in particular and as much as they do use it as an anchor after the fact in the other films it didn't hit me like it is it does just listening to you describe it yeah it didn't not at all yeah so after i read it i looked up about ian fleming right and his whole writing style was to pull everything from his life Mm. and some people think it's kind of a problem because james bond is like a imagined what he wishes he was (laughs) 
Uh, I don't know what there's a term for right, that. Right, 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 right. Wish fulfillment, kind of. <laughs> I, I, you know. Yeah. Modeling it after yourself, but all the good parts are the things you wish you were. But Ian Fleming smoked and drank a lot. <laughs> Smelled uh, him from, from a mile away. He died in his fifties because of it. The, I wonder if then that would be what if we got a James Bond movie where he died in his fifties <laughs> because he just smoked and drank until. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, why did that? <laughs> That's marketable. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody steal that. <laughs> Ian Fleming's father died in World War One. Oh, so maybe that's where some of the womanizing, no f- good fatherly influence. Yeah, coming hmm. from as a kid. I just well, pulled I that out of that my. Would go the other way because I, I like you. If you go, if you grow up with a single mother at, from a young a young age, you don't have the masculine influence. It, like yeah you're you would be infinitely more influenced by by the female i don't know i'm just making all that up i don't really know if ian fleming had that as part of his personality mm. but if it's his central character mm-hmm, and that's mm-hmm. this is the only fictional thing he ever wrote was the james bond books except for chitty chitty bang bang oh my gosh i think i did i did hear that at some point that's yeah, he wrote hilarious. that in the last year of his life <laughs> And uh, one more for the, for the people a children's in the book back. about a flying yeah. car. <laughs> <laughs> well, fantastic. Yeah. Before all that, though, he was the personal assistant to the director of naval intelligence in World War II. Okay. And then worked for that organization for all of World War II. So he essentially was in the spy game. I like. Yeah, I like. He, he was has like some legitim- F. Cool. Um, and then he was a part of the two big things he was a part of as a part of naval intelligence was. An operation in case as a contingency if the Germans took over Spain and Gibraltar and then would try to get in via Um. that avenue. And that was called Operation Goldeneye. Uh, Which he then There it is. He was also a part of the T-Force. But the T-Force was when there was a – they reclaimed a big town or city and wanted to collect the intelligence that was left via documents and – uh, technology and that kind of stuff sweeping through. Mm-hmm. And then he lived in Jamaica after the uh, war, which is where a lot of the Caribbean kind of sensibility sense, yeah. of the James Bond movies. I don't know the if that's tropical, true, but I, I feel as, like that comes you know, into play The destination a lot. aspect of it. Mm-hmm. And he wrote uh, the first, he wrote Casino Royale in a month. Wow. That's and, cool. And then he kept up that precedent for all of the other books. Hmm. He would say, I just write for five hours in the morning, drop out 2,000 words a day, never look back, and then never edit it, and it was done. What a boss. Um, and a lot Can of the stuff... Can we all be like it? Yeah. I don't of, believe it was a real story. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of the stuff in Casino Royale was based on his life experience. So the poker game, apparently he played poker, and there was some German officer that was involved, and he was trying to beat him. And the bomb situation actually happened. There was an attempted assassination of the vice chancellor of Germany when Hitler was in power. Mm. It went awry by Bulgarians. Oh, no, the Bulgarians. (laughs) So he put that in there. Apparently the torture that was used was similar to something that people did that he knew about when he was in the intelligence world. That particular. I love thing. it. I mean, I, I why not? Why mm-hmm. are you not drawn from your life? Why mm-hmm. are you not using the? Re- it's the stuff that makes it real. It makes it. It's it's the it's the story mm-hmm. because it's not like anyone else. It's, it's not another story because it's what happens in this story. <laughs> That's why it's this one and not yeah. everyone. <laughs> Even to the name of James Bond. So James Bond was originally going to be James Secretan. Oh God! A terrible name. But again, like I said, he wanted it to be the dullest person yeah. possible. That's even too fancy. So one of his favorite books was The Birds of the West Indies, an ornithological book about mm-hmm. birds. Who was the author of that but James Bond? My gosh. Boring. <laughs> yeah, a book about birds. Perfect, James Bond. <laughs> Nobody will like it. What him. are they going to do? Turn him into this, the most charming, the most charming spy mm-hmm. of all time. Good, How great. James Bond. <laughs> And last little thing about him, there's an international airport in Jamaica that got named after him Jesus. in the 2000s. Oh, that's Ian disappointing. Ian Fleming International Airport, yeah. Oh, okay. I thought you were going to say James Bond. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> I was going, oh, that's dis. I said that's disappointing. I went, oh, no. The James no, they named Bond it after the International Airport. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah. Now, now that I think about it, I wish it was the James Bond National. <laughs> Apparently, there's a Batman International Airport there? in Turkey. No way. It's not. It's not named after Batman. It's a Accidentally, word it word. is. It's <laughs> yeah, good too, enough. I'll take it. Too bad. But that's Casino Royale. That's that's fascinating. That that was way more. The characters felt like real people in in a weirder way. Like it it was interesting that that James Bond was was way more cold and gruff and and, mm-hmm. and all that kind of stuff. And he and he's not paying attention to the women and spe- specifically uh, bike uh, <laughs> <laughs> motorcycle lady. Uh, uh, but that when he we discover her character with him mm-hmm. instead of not writing a full character it's specifically seeing it through the eyes of your main character not seeing mm-hmm. this person as a whole person and then getting to the end and seeing them as a whole person and then ripping it right from you and then really seeing she's yeah. a whole person because she's yeah. even more conflicted oh, yeah. than you learned Perfect. in the time that you learned about her amazing I, that that's just the thing that that is just absent from the film in my in my feel like I, but i feel like they were the, trying like, to re- do that i do i'm not Whenever, saying they yeah. i'm not saying they they missed it and didn't know that was an important act. it just it didn't resonate i don't know what it was is that whole i feel like everything stops with the torture and i am done with that movie mm. and i don't like i feel like that is i've heard that reaction far beyond just myself so and that's I don't know it just it just doesn't carry that extra that extra act and I, I'm one now I really would like to revisit it having uh, having had this discussion like really compare them because I wonder what just misses the mark because it's not like they didn't try to do it maybe it just it's didn't because hit. when you have a really good story the person starts one way and ends a completely different way and I don't know if. And maybe people wouldn't have liked it, but if Daniel Craig was more gruff and hated people and just wanted to get the job done and didn't And by the end he was swab, swab because maybe, she was elegant. Yeah. Or maybe, maybe our perception of James Bond has been so manipulated that even if he doesn't act that way, we expect him right. to be that yeah. way. Yeah, I would like now to go back and, and look and see what is really presented. But I couldn't do that before we did this. <laughs> now, see, that's why I didn't do the homework before. So now I can go back. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. It's all for yeah, me. It's all for yeah. me, Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> um, the the most immediate thing that again, and this seems to come up, and I love that it keeps coming up. But just writing what you know, that seems to be a, a pretty strong one here, and it just it resonates, man. It makes it. It's colorful. It's real. Like. Because I immediately go, God, a Jamaican guy come walking into the walking into the casino. But like, yeah, I, you can't can't you imagine that happening at some point? Um, you know, his his uh his naval experience is is key. Uh, just being able to write this thing and and being able to sound at all like you know what's what international covert intelligence at all. Involves. Yeah, if you can if you can kind of sound like that great because mm-hmm. it's so it's really hard it's it's hard to fake so you know that's i just i love people leaning into whatever they it has whatever seen, their experience it, yeah, it has is definitely now that we've done this for a little bit been a trend in basically everything that we've read so far yeah has been here's this person oh now let's go look up see what they did oh exactly what they yeah. wrote about <laughs> maybe that's why it's good and it's like and we wouldn't read a book about like a trans character written by some white man. Yeah. Like we just wouldn't bring that to the airwaves. <laughs> like, right. <laughs> or people would belittle it because they're like, well, how would you know? Right. Exa- no, but exactly. So why wouldn't you trust somebody writing a fake story about a subject they know a, sh- a lot about? Mm-hmm. You know, like. I, uh, w- yeah. It is a tough thing, though, because I I also interpret it for people that say, oh, well, I have no life experience or my life is boring or or whatever the case may right. be. The counter argument to that is not just write what you know, but write what you want to understand. Definitely, yeah. And you could incorporate a lot of themes about stuff just because you, you might be listening to this and be in high school or be in some job that you don't like. And you don't even necessarily, okay, cool. You don't have to write about how you were working at State Farm. Shout out to State Farm, but <laughs> yeah, well, you can write State about Farm. the th- you could write about a ad. spy who is in an organization that's similar, 
but the themes of purpose and belonging and communication all, you know all those yeah. types of things yeah absolutely i love people leaning into what they're what they know and what they're good at and making something incredible of, out of it it's 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 always just so satisfying yeah. it's... and then there was what was it 12 more books that he did 11 more books oh man hold on yeah i had that there was 11 novels short two short story collections and then mm-hmm. Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. <laughs> and then he died. Uh, and that's... And he was out the game. <laughs> <laughs> he said, deuces, I drank and smoked too much. Yo, you got James Bond. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna die real quick. <laughs> Bro, I hope he had a cigar in his mouth. Man. So that was everything. That was, uh... That was illuminating, to be honest. Like, the... I just am shocked of how differently that third act hit me than than I had been in the film. But yeah, check it out. <clears throat> Tell right. your friends about James Bond. Yeah. Maybe hit up the audio book or just whatever you learned this week and surprise somebody. And then did you have an announcement? I do have an announcement. Again, y'all, just tell somebody about us. Recommend us to your friend. Something interesting you thought was uh, you thought was cool. Uh, get a conversation going and, and say, you know, this this thing, uh, I heard this on, on, on this podcast. You know, what, however you want to do it. But yeah, just... It would be lovely if you could recommend us to somebody. Word of mouth is our oxygen. It's how we breathe. It's our breath. It's our, it's our, mm, it's our, it's, it, it's, it's our LaCroix. Gold. It's the, mm. it is, it, it is the LaCroix. <laughs> of our operation right now. <laughs> so, yeah. So keep shouting us out. Yeah. Keep telling people. All right, guys. See you next week. Next week. Bye.